Right, well, here's a quick intro. I've just put together this desk over the past couple of days. I'm going to show you how I did it and uh, all the features and products that are used in it. So, roll that clip. What's up everyone? My name is Joe Allen and I'm vlogging on the GH5. This is my first time using this properly. And in this video, it's going to be a bit of a mix of two of my general style videos that I've made previously. So it's going to be a setup of my office space. So you can see I'm in this room here that's a complete mess. We've just moved back into our flat in London. Um, and it's also going to be a rundown of some recent tech that I've purchased and uh, have acquired recently. Now first and foremost, as you can see, this room is really small. Uh, and there's just one tiny little window back there um, letting in some natural light. So I haven't got much room to play with. So I'm actually planning to set my desk up along the back wall just there um, and then potentially have some storage stuff in this area. By the way, if you saw my previous desk setups, both here in London from about three years ago and uh, my one in Melbourne um, from a year ago, pretty much all of the equipment has changed. Uh, so this is gonna be like a new chapter, I guess, of uh, my workspace. This is a standard Ikea, uh, I think it's called the Linman uh, top. Collectively with the legs, it came to about 35 pounds. The legs themselves are like two pound 50 and the top is 25 pounds. Uh, now I went for five legs um, obviously four for each corner and then I'm going to put in an additional fifth one at the back in the middle. It doesn't necessarily need it but for my peace of mind having a display on top of it and stuff um, I'm just going to do that to stop it from like bowing over you know long period of time. Now also this desk is just a temporary solution. I'm looking for a really premium nice uh, hopefully a hardwood desk so if you guys have any recommendations, leave those in the comments below. Likewise, if you're interested in seeing how this desk progresses, then of course subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm going to be posting loads of videos within this room uh, and this desk setup uh, going forward, so you'll see how it evolves from here on out. Has anyone ever successfully taken these labels off, by the way? I mean, what a mess every single time. <laughs> So this shelving unit is perfect for cable tying because you've got all those holes in there you can just put a cable through. Normally, it's designed to be uh, this orientation, but I actually prefer to use it upside down because then you've got the little lip on the edge that can catch anything that's rolling off. Shelving unit in place. So the first thing that I'm looking to unbox, and uh, I've just found it in pretty much the first box I opened actually, is this. Now this is uh, an Ikea laptop stand and uh, you'll see that I've covered it in um, Velcro. I just got some Velcro strips here. You may have seen this in a previous video but I really only lightly touched on it. Now this is going to become my charging station uh, for all my camera batteries um, and the reason it's got Velcro on there is so that everything is organized. I'll probably touch on this a little bit later as I'm setting up. Alright so the desk setup in the office setup is going to have to be delayed by an extra day because uh, I'm actually heading out this evening. Um, just for reference, tonight is Halloween. Spooky. Um, so yeah, we will continue this uh, another day. And uh, I'm, I'm glad with the progress I've made in the space of about an hour and a half this afternoon. It's been good. Right, catch you in a bit. All right, so we are back in the room. I'm hoping that I can smash this out in an afternoon. Um, I've got pretty much everything I need all ready to go. It's just a case of getting it in the right place and plugging it all in, cable tying it, getting it nice and organized. Uh, in fact, I'm actually probably gonna use zero cable ties um, and go for 100% Velcro. Um, I've been using that recently and it makes it so much easier, especially when you wanna amend your desk setup at a later date um, and there's just less waste. So the main essence of this battery charger station is you have the laptop stand and you sit it over the power extension lead uh, and then all the cables just run around the side and keep it nice and hidden and tidy. And you can see I run the extension lead um, straight into the socket underneath the desk and that fifth leg uh, actually proves a good place to hide the cables behind and offer some support. So with each battery charger, I then put a strip of Velcro uh, running lengthways uh, and that then sticks on the unit just like that. So I make sure to put the Velcro on the soft side on this side uh, because these chargers quite often come with me when I'm traveling and uh, they're just a bit nicer to pick up in your hands when it's the soft side rather than the hard 
uh, hard edge side. Now you'll notice on a lot of my gear I have these little labels. Uh, these are made with a Dymo label maker. I'll leave a link in the description because a lot of you guys are always asking how I make the labels. Um, they just look a little bit more consistent than if you handwrite them. Um, I really like the aesthetic of it. Uh, and you can just get the extra tape in different colors. Um, you can see most of my stuff is in red. I've since run out of red tape and I've moved on to the blue one now. But um, yeah, it's, you know, classic vintage um, Dymo. On the next shelf up, the next thing I'm gonna be setting up uh, is actually the first major new product of this office setup, and that is the Synology Disk Station DS1817+. Plus. Uh, now I'm currently working on a separate video um, about this and my whole setup and how I'm actually using it. Essentially speaking, this is a NAS, which is a network attached storage. Um, so it's sort of like a, a home server really. And in there I've got some Seagate iWolf Pro drives. There are 12 terabyte drives and I've got, I think six in there. And collectively uh, that all goes into a RAID array. Um, and I have a huge amount of storage that I can put all my photos and videos and archive and all sorts in there. Um, but you'll see all of that in the separate video. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, I'm still working on that one, so that will probably be coming out fairly soon after this one. Oh, he's a heavy bugger. Oh, the drive should be in here. Yep. Hey, yeah, that slides out just above that lip quite perfectly. Also got this uh, low pro hard side 400 case in here. I've got an assortment of other hard drives and various other things. For the main power supply under the desk, I have this uh, extension lead from Brennan's store. This is uh, called the Hugo and it has eight outlets. It's a surge protected, um, pretty industrial looking extension lead. I actually spent a long time on Amazon trying to find the right extension lead to get. Uh, and I settled on this one. They come in a variety of different flavors, um, different sizes and all sorts. Um, and I'm just gonna cable tie it underneath hanging upside down and everything can plug into it. All right, I think it's time to open the main attraction now. Yep, this sued up. This is my display. Uh, this is the ViewSonic VP32684K. That's gonna take center stage on the desk. Uh, let's whack it out. So first of all, you just got the base unit and then you just put the screen on and uh, gravity just holds it in place. Boom, there we go. So the display's got a number of connections. Uh, so it works as a USB hub. You got audio in and out. There's a mini display port, regular display port, and then two HDMI cables, um, as well as being able to be oriented in portrait mode, just like it is here. And what's great about this display is it doesn't have any sort of artistic color profile to the imagery. Um, so the actual colors that you see are as true to life as possible. They're not stylized like um, certain other displays from other manufacturers are, uh, which is great for me for editing video and editing photos. Um, just means that I can get a really, I guess, honest um, view of the colors that I'm using. Uh, now, one thing that is really, really disappointing about this is it doesn't have USB-C. Maybe ViewSonic will release a USB-C one in the future, um, but it does mean that I have to connect multiple things to my MacBook Pro um, rather than just the one cable. But, you know, for such a good display, I'm not really complaining. And of course, it is full 4K um, UHD resolution, uh, and it's got this nice anti-glare finish to it. I really don't like glossy displays. Um, and the bezels on it are really small. It's got really, really tiny bezels. It's really quite a smart design. Now, as I mentioned, it doesn't have USB-C, so I've had to buy this cable separately. This goes from DisplayPort on the left to USB-C on the right. Uh, this is a pretty great cable. I spent a long time trying to find the right ones. Uh, and what's nice about this is it's actually got a little lock um, just so that when it's in place, it's just held in place with that lock. Now you could use either HDMI or DisplayPort um, for your display, both of which will run full 4K at 60 Hertz. Um, I personally just went for the DisplayPort. I've been reading up into the actual um, development of DisplayPort and kind of the, the people behind it. And I actually really support what they're doing. Um, so DisplayPort, if you don't realize, it's not licensed like HDMI is. Um, and they're really trying to push boundaries on what you can do with a single cable. Um, and of course, DisplayPort is what has made it into Thunderbolt 3. Picked up this light from Ikea as well. Really liking this. And it's uh, not badly priced either. It's pretty cheap. I think it was like 30 pounds maybe. And a nice LED light under there. Cool, so 
that is it. Uh, my desk is pretty much complete. There's still a ton of boxes around here uh, and there's still more work to do in the room, uh, especially to do with the audio and the acoustics. It's probably quite echoey at the moment, but that's gonna take quite a few weeks, I think, to perfect and finalize. So I'm gonna end this video here and uh, just run you through some of the finishing touches I've put on my desk. Now, the main piece of the puzzle that I hadn't featured before was my new MacBook Pro. Now, this is a 2017 model. Uh, this is the touch bar. It is the top spec with the, uh, the higher rated graphics card and I've upgraded the SSD to one terabyte internal. I've not gone for the two terabyte um, just because that is incredibly expensive and most of the work that I do is on external drives anyway. Uh, speaking of which, I've picked up a new external drive. This is the Samsung SSD T5. Uh, now this comes in a variety of different sizes and uh, I'm using this mainly for my video work because it runs off of USB-C and it is SSD. It is an incredibly fast drive um, and I've got some more videos planned around this. Now along with the MacBook Pro, which of course is fully USB-C Thunderbolt 3, um, so there are only four ports on it and all of which are the Thunderbolt 3 in USB-C flavor, um, I've had to upgrade a lot of my peripherals so that they can connect into it. If you'd have gone down this route a year ago, you'd be in full dongle life with dongles everywhere for all sorts of adapters. These days, it's actually a lot easier to just replace the cables to your hard drive. Now, I've picked up quite a few. Um, so we've got some Belkin ones here, and uh, this one is from Cho Tech. Um, that is a USB-C to display port, as I featured earlier, connecting into the, um, into the display. Now, these cables are pretty inexpensive. You can find them on Amazon. In fact, I've got an Amazon Basics one, which is about, I think, seven pounds, six pounds or something, and that way I can connect my external hard drives that I'm previously using into my new MacBook Pro, no problems whatsoever. Now the stand that you see my Mac is sitting on, this is quite an old one that I used to use way back at uni. Um, and this is, I believe it's called the M stand from Rain Design. And uh, I've resurrected it now that I've gone back to a laptop with a display setup rather than a full iMac desktop, which I had last year. Now underneath the desk, you'll see that I've put a little um, headphone hook. So I've also picked up some new headphones uh, to go on that headphone hook. Now these are the Sony, uh, they're called the Hear On Wireless Noise Cancelling. Um, they are the MDR100ABN. Um, so these are fully Bluetooth or uh, they come with a 3.5mm uh, analog audio cable if you want as well. When it comes to noise cancelling headphones, a lot of people are kind of torn between these ones and the Bose QuietComfort uh, 35s. I've had a test of both and if I'm being truly honest, I actually prefer the noise cancellation on the Sony headphones uh, compared to the Bose. But not only that, I've had quite a few different pairs of Bose headphones in the past and unfortunately all the cushioning and the cables, they've just perished really poorly. Um, and I look after my stuff really well and I keep it in the case, but the fact that it's all fallen apart doesn't give me much sort of hope for a new set of Bose headphones. So I'm going with these Sony ones. So far I'm loving them. When I flew to Japan recently um, and I was using those on the plane, you just realize how much you need noise cancellation in your life. Now some other items that are new to the desk setup from previous years. Uh, I've got the new Apple Magic Keyboard. Um, this is a really, really nice keyboard to use. Uh, now I've used the Apple wireless keyboards for the past few years, but the new key design on this is just such a dream to use. I really, really enjoy typing on it. Um, but not only that, it's got the built-in battery and it charges over lightning. Um, so if you've got any iPhone cables around, you can just charge your keyboard nice and simply. Um, or if you really want to, you could even charge it in the dock. I've done that a couple of times because it's on my desk. And alongside that, I'm using the original Apple Magic trackpad. Now this is the old style with the included batteries. Um, so you do have to take them out and charge them rather than plugging in through a cable. Um, I quite often chop and change between using trackpad and mouse. Um, and I've recently got the Logitech MX Master 2S. I've had a few different Logitech Master mice uh, in the past. I've had the old MX Master and the Performance MX a few years ago. I don't know what happened, but the last time I got one of these, uh, I actually returned it because I was like, nah, not into it, not liking it at all. Um, and then this year I've got one again because I'm thinking I did like it for a good two years beforehand. Maybe I would have liked it. And I'm not sure again. So I don't know. I mean, I, I started to get a little bit of wrist strain and I'm not sure if it was the mouse that's done that or if it's just the fact that I'm using a mouse again, I haven't done so for, you know, quite a while whilst I've been traveling. Yeah, I'm not sure. So it sits at the back of my desk and I'm just testing it out um, every now and then. 
So as for the desk itself, there's a few items that you've seen in previous desk setups. Uh, most namely would be my speakers. These are the Bose Companion 3 Series 2. Um, I've used these for a long time. I really love them. Great little setup for a small room such as this. And I've also got a couple of items that have been sent to me that I'd like to feature in this video. Firstly, this is the Narbox. Um, now the Narbox I've yet to actually properly set up and play with, but I'm really intrigued by the concept of it. Um, it's a portable hard drive that can connect wirelessly to um, your phone or to your computer and such and you can import and back up your data from your memory cards whilst you're out on the shoot. This is completely weatherproof, um, really nice rugged design and this is a 256 gigabyte version. I can store a couple of cards worth of data if I need to um, but a big factor of it is the wireless communication to your phone. Um, that way I can edit stuff on the fly and if I want to share things from my camera directly it's much easier to do it through this than it is to do it between camera and phone. And another item, uh, this is the Raspberry mic from Blue Mics. Now this is a travel friendly uh, USB capsule mic. Now this can connect into um, your iPhone or into your Mac or anything like that. Um, it's really nice and small and would help with when I'm traveling and I need to do voiceovers, you know, and I don't actually have a big microphone with me whilst I'm traveling. So I'm intrigued to know how well this will do. I've used it in a couple of live streams recently and the audio apparently came out really crisp for everyone on the other end. Now another item I wanna share with you guys is a book that I've picked up recently. Um, this is The Four Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I've been recommended this book so many times from various blog posts and other people and it's a really interesting read. I don't agree 100% with everything about this and if anything um, what I've read so far which is about uh, what's that like just under half has been really reaffirming to what I've already been doing on a lot of things on how I've gone more independent with my work and yeah I think it's a it's a really interesting read you should definitely look it up if you're interested in changing your lifestyle from working the nine to five now a lot of you guys have seen in my latest Fujifilm videos that I've been using a lens hood um, now I did mention it in the description, but so many people still comment about it asking what is the hood? So I'm going to tell you right now. This is the JJC uh, X100F lens hood and I've got it in the square version It does also come in a round version a lot of people ask why did you go for the square? Well your sensor is square so it gives you more coverage because you don't actually lose any of that top coverage of protection from the Sun now a few people have also asked, does it show up in the optical viewfinder? And yes, it does. Um, I personally use the electronic viewfinder most of the time, so it doesn't bother me because it's not in the electronic shop. Just the very final mention now, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to all of you guys who've purchased my uh, Lightroom presets, the Urban Chrome set. There's 25 different um, presets in there and I'm just so overwhelmed with how many people have really, really enjoyed those and the comments that I've got and people sharing them on Instagram. Uh, and the messages people have sent me, they seem to really fit the mark for a wide variety of genres of photography. Um, so of course for me they were inspired by Japan and that urban like shininess, edginess of images. But I've been using them in some shots around London and other stuff. Um, but I just want to say a massive thank you. Uh, you've really helped support this channel. Um, and I just hope you're enjoying the shots. I know they're being featured in some book designs as well, which is kind of cool. Anyway, I've been talking a lot. This has been a very different video. It's kind of like a mix of my recent tech and my desk setup, um, but I hope you enjoy how we got here and um, the full setup and uh, make sure you do subscribe to this channel to see how this setup changes because it's gonna be evolving with future videos and I'll be doing tutorials and other stuff in here as well as my photography travel vlogs. Um, and day-to-day -day stuff. It's going to be a busy, busy few months um, now that I'm back in London and uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. Cool. So I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, make sure you give this video a massive like if you enjoyed it. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, then um, give it a massive like. And just another thought, what have you guys been thinking about vlogging with the GH5? Uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. The file sizes are coming out huge. Um, but that at least tells me that the quality is good. So if you've enjoyed it, I'm stoked for that um, because I've been desperate to upgrade my vlogging camera for a long time. Right, I'm going to head off now. Catch you later. Bye-bye.